The Landmark Theater is providing a renewed energy to downtown Syracuse. The Landmark hosted 19 shows in March, attracting 50,000 people into this historic building. Seating renovations inside only adding more youth to an attraction that's called downtown home for nearly a century. Syracuse Mayor Ben Walsh says this is the start to something special. Hamilton alone attracted 42,000 people in 11 days. Uh, there were a number of times when I walked down the 300 block of Salina Street, saw lines coming out the door at the Landmark and just smiled because uh, uh, we deserve it as a community. Danny Litka is the president and CEO of Visit Syracuse. He says the traffic coming in and out of the landmark leads to the doorsteps of other businesses in the downtown area. More business means more money, which could lead to more jobs. They're a big catalyst for the downtown scene. Uh, those restaurants and bars look forward to the nights of shows. They have packed houses. Some of you have been around long enough to remember the thriving days on South Salina Street. The past four weeks was a good image of what that looked like about 50 years ago. South Salina Street is our main street. It always has been, and I think we're starting to see it go back to the days that uh, many of our parents or grandparents remember. Like its marquee, the landmark shines bright even on the rainy days. Parking garages filling up nearby, businesses cashing in, and crowds of people making their way to three more shows arriving next week. The marquee ended up probably being the most photographed object in Syracuse for that two-week stretch. Everywhere I went, people were talking about that. I heard more about Hamilton than I heard about the basketball team this year. So hats off to the folks at the Landmark, and thanks to the folks that came in and supported local businesses. Yes, 5's Laura Lagarde has been tracking this story. She's standing by with the live eye in clay, seeing if that has worked in other areas before. Laura. Brandon, the thought of repurposing fading properties into affordable housing isn't unique to Onondaga County. That's why I spoke with people from places around the country where it's worked. Onondaga County Executive Ryan McMahon announced the call for a foreclosure of Great Northern Mall. And in that, suggested a new life for the space that could help a different problem in the suburbs north of Syracuse. We do know we have a housing, uh, you know, a shortage of, of units in our in our community. So um, I certainly think there could be a housing component in the long term. John Capello, partner with Jacobitz and Gubitz Law Firm, specializes in zoning and has written about transforming vacant developments into affordable housing and says Onondaga County should consider doing it. Already is kind of set up with the infrastructure for it, parking and everything, and it could be some, you know, it's a win-win. Charlottesville, Virginia is currently building an affordable housing units in vacant mall space. Lyle Soliates, chair of the Charlottesville Planning Commission, says it's a long process, but it's worth it at the end of the day. What's exciting about a, a mall project is we're talking about a lot of land generally in an area uh, near jobs and services, uh, near transportation, uh, at, uh, really an exciting place. Soliates says there was some pushback. But overall, people were excited to see more housing be brought to the community. Many, many people, and I think, will reasonably say it's an exciting place to see some positive change. This is only one of McMahon's ideas for the space, which is far from being county property at this point. Capello says if you have the space, it might not be a bad idea. These mega malls and huge malls that we have are, are becoming, you know, um, abandoned, and it provides a real opportunity to uh, revitalize and utilize. The county civil suit against Great Northern owners just entered court yesterday. They are also asking to get more than $5 million back in taxes for the space. Live for us in play to explain how the owners of these stores are taking this news today. Sam? Well, today I checked in with the tenants over at Bill's Carpet, and I have to tell you, they say nothing surprises them, not even this most recent development. And they also know it might be a while before change is really felt at the mall. It's been a long road for Bill and Lynn Camiso. Been there for eight years, and eight years ago that mall was 100% full, and eight years later here we are today. The county is now calling for foreclosure against the mall owner. In addition to owing more than $5 million in back taxes, the owner faces more than a dozen code violations, a broken payment agreement, and two shutdowns, one of which is happening right now. It's frustrating as an owner. We're trying to just run a business. 
and, 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 and you know, meet with our customers every day, and it's very difficult. Making it worse, the Camisos hardly have any contact with the owner. When they do, they say he's dismissive. Bill Camiso travels to the mall three to four times per day to see if it's even open or not. I called Cohen yesterday and I said, I'm a tenant at the mall. Can you tell me when it's going to be open? And he doesn't answer. He continues to tell false things. They've considered moving out, but with that option comes its own set of risks, leaving them and perhaps others in what feels like a lose-lose situation. It costs money to move. It's time and effort, it's labor, it's people. Right now in that area for eight years, we've serviced that end of Liverpool, uh, Beeville, Clay, Fulton, and that's where our, our customer base is right now for that location. Now today during his press conference, the county executive said he believes he'll have a well-documented case against the owner. Only issue they may run into is that the foreclosure process could take months, even years, from start to finish.